because I do think that this, uh, the, the, the inner action that takes place in here on a daily basis is one that's good for our democracy. It is, it, it is value, it's instrumental to holding people in power accountable for their actions, accountable for their statements, and accountable for their promises. That's a man you probably know, President Obama's spokesman Josh Earnest, on the potential changes to the White House press corps. There has been some talk President-elect Donald Trump could scrap the traditional daily White House briefing. In fact, it's been 122 days since Mr. Trump has held a formal news conference. That's the kind of thing he once criticized his opponents for doing. Last night, he did hold a 30-minute off-the-record chat with the press pool inside his Mar-a-Lago mansion in Palm Beach. For more on all of this, we're joined by Rich Lowry, editor of the National Review magazine and a Fox News contributor. Juan Williams, you also know, Fox News political analyst and co-host of The Five. Uh, there are pictures that were tweeted out from this Mar-a-Lago party, and some of the press is already taking heat from palling around with the president elect all you know smiley face and so forth in these pictures what do you think about that anything wrong with that i think there's something wrong with the criticism because i think if you're in the press pool and you have the opportunity to have access to the president elect to try to develop relationships i think that's what a reporter should do rich yeah i don't see why this is supposedly scandalous at taking a picture with the, the president elect and it's an american tradition that presidents have kind of friendly off the record sessions with reporters going all the way back to fdr and even further and Trump even though he is really excoriatingly critical of the press as a general matter is quite capable of being charming and chummy with individual reporters even if not me or one. <laughs> <laughs> you got that one. <laughs> there is talk about him uh, you know canceling the presidential daily briefing maybe you know moving some of the press corps out of the seats that they have held in the White House briefing room for a long time what do you make of all that is it is it overdue or is it um, you know much ado about nothing. No, I, I find this troubling because uh, now Reince Priebus, who is going to be the chief of staff, I think he told Hugh Hewitt that he considered the daily briefing to be sort of mundane. It doesn't always make news. And he thinks that really what we should be doing in the White House is the president should have occasions that are news making where news is broken. Or no, but I think that what we just heard from Josh Earnest at the top of this segment about accountability, about a daily accounting of what the president's doing, what he's saying, keeping promises, not keeping promises. I think it may be tedious at some point if you're watching C-SPAN and the like, but occasionally you get real news out of there. Well, let's, let's play uh, more of what Josh Ernest had to say about that, then I'll get Rich's reaction. But he was asked about Reince Priebus' suggestions uh, that, the uh, that the daily briefing, daily press briefing might go away. Here's Josh Ernest again. The White House press corps has worked uh, among yourselves uh, to organize the seating arrangements in this room. And uh, I certainly would recommend to the incoming administration that they uh, collect and familiarize themselves with some basic facts as they uh, consider uh, what sort of policies to implement moving forward. Uh, the White House press corps, it has been suggested, you know, thinks too much of itself and, and perhaps uh, considers itself too important in dispensing knowledge to the nation. I don't know. What do you think, Rich? Well, the press briefing, you know, it's a custom, so maybe it's worth keeping just on, on those grounds. But I think it, it's not really useful in terms of getting information out there. It's very useful providing cable fodder for us to all argue about. But usually the press secretary is just kind of spinning and evading as much as he can. And what we'll see in general, whether they keep the briefing or not, Trump, more than any other president, is going to try to go above and around the press and has the social media and communication skills to have more success at that, I think, than any president has had before. Well, we saw it over the weekend in his tweets about the, the Chinese seizing of the U.S. Navy drone. That got an awful lot of attention. It sure did. And, and the tweeting is really his direct line, picking up on what Rich says. It allows him to go around. But, you know, my concern and the reason I think it's valuable is that you have to have accountability. And I think that as he goes around, he's not holding himself accountable. It's hard for the average American to do so. And I think that's where reporters play an instrumental and key role. I mean, when you, know, you look at the conflict of interest potential with the Trump administration, with his finances, when reporters get busy and start probing there, I can imagine that Trump will be tweeting, ignore them, or why don't we have some investigations into leaks around here? Who's talking to these people? Mm -hmm. 
that becomes highly contentious, and I think it's important that there be a touchstone of a place where reporters can go to get a response from the administration. And what about his lack of a press conference? He hasn't had one in, what, four months? Yeah, a little I, better than that? I was very critical of Hillary on the score, and I'm critical of Trump. I do think this, when Juan refers to a touchstone, this is a very important one, to have the, yeah. the president on some regular basis, not every week, but available for the press. And I don't think he's something that he should fear. He is completely fearless in these <laughs> settings. Maybe people around him and some of his aides don't want him to do it, but I think it's, it's something, that he, an opportunity he should welcome. It could be a lot more entertaining than those that we've seen here <laughs> yeah, before. Oh, boy. All right. Rich Lowry, Juan Williams, thank you both. Thanks, thank John. You, John.